This is about defending democracy. This is no longer Democrats versus Republicans. What do you want your kids to believe in? There must be give and take. This is White Flag with Joe Walsh. Hey, Joe Walsh, former Congressman Joe Walsh. This is White Flag with Joe Walsh. Um, thank you for listening. If you want to email me about anything, do Joe Walsh White Flag at gmail.com. That's one word, Joe Walsh White Flag at gmail.com. Every week, I try to sit down with somebody who doesn't think like me. Uh, I'm tired of sitting down with people who think like me. Um, this week, I've got a, uh, a journalist and writer, Kelly Scaletta, uh, who's joining me. Uh, the, the, the 20 seconds on my relationship with Kelly is, we are probably, and Kelly, you can correct me, polar opposites politically. We began to engage on Twitter probably six, seven years ago. Maybe it was the old Joe Walsh. <laughs> Kelly very respectfully, but sometimes forcefully would pound me on stuff, but we developed a, a relationship and a friendship. Kelly, welcome. I want to start here uh, and then away you and I go. I tweeted out maybe a week or so ago, NBC put out like a stupid headline about, I'm forgetting what it was. It was maybe about the guy that killed somebody in one of those, uh, in one of the rallies. Yes. And, and they kind of left out that he was killed and just that he fell back and hit his head on the pavement, whatever. But not important. I said something like, this is why so many Americans hate the mainstream media. You got right back at me and you said, you quibbled with the term mainstream media, which I want to get into. You. And then I got a sense, and this is what I want to get into, because Kelly, this has always fascinated me. I believe that the mainstream media, traditional media, whatever the hell you want to call it, is left wing in this country. Most of it is. Start there. Respond to that. I think, uh, I, I wish I could remember the Al Franken quote, but he said something one time <laughs> about like asking whether the left, whether the mainstream media has a left wing bias is like asking uh, a jihadist what their favorite flavor of hummus is. It's 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 just like the totally wrong question to ask. Why? Ma mainstream media has a sensationalist bias more than a left wing or right wing bias. And I would say that like that was th he said that back in when he in, in his book. Yeah, a long time ago. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, lying liars and the liars who tell them or something like that. But um, and that was pre Twitter pre yeah. social media um now it's all click everything is click based uh the the uh you know having worked in the industry yeah you, 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 you know your your job actually depends a lot of times on how many people are reading your article uh and by the way kelly has that gotten worse or has it always been that way I think it's what 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 what's changed is now people know who's reading what. Okay. Like you'd have a lot of journalists that were kind of forced out and they're like complaining about it. And it's like, well, just because your articles were in the papers for 20 years doesn't mean anybody was reading them. Yeah. Now we know nobody read them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that changes things. Uh, and then on top of that, I was thinking about like the one... Uh, the one kid that was, uh, I can't think of his name, but there was like the Native Americans that were singing, and then the high school kids started oh. pretending to be Native Americans, and there was all yeah, this yeah. hoopla about whether or not he was mocking them. And without getting into the details of that, some of the networks lost a lawsuit over it by, yeah. by jumping to conclusions, right? So when it yeah. comes to something like what happened, you know, with with the guy getting killed, you know, it, it's hard if you're in the media to, to, to know how to cover that story. Like if you jump in and say he's murdered, are you going to be getting a lawsuit? If you don't say he's murdered, 
then you're looking at, well, you're not covering the story correctly. So there's, it's almost like there is no right way to look at that from a media perspective. Um, I, I get that. I get that. But answer me something. Go bigger picture with me. I've always felt that generally, and I think the data backs this up, lefties get into journalism generally people who want to do good and look after the oppressed and all the rest it's it's an industry that i think is fairly well dominated by people on the left which is why i've just always felt there's a bias i i think where some of that by some of that sense might come from is well there's i'd say it's a few things one is I, I would say the the majority opinion aligns with the left a lot, like when it comes to gun control, when it comes to abortion, when it comes to school choice, when it comes to most things, the like, they they poll sixty to eighty percent on what's called the liberal view, and so it's right. you know sometimes I wonder if we just like if you've ever lived in Europe or been to Europe. If Joe Biden were in Europe right now, running on the yeah. exact same agenda, he would be considered a right-wing extremist. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, you Completely know, like, well, let's different. privatize the healthcare industry and stuff like like it would be. Yeah. So, so our perspective of left versus right is already skewed right. Um, the uh, the second thing is. Uh, I I think there is something to more journalists are left wing. Yeah. Um, my mom was, you know, she was a career journalist. She got, she won a Pulitzer Prize. Um, but, and she was very left wing, but I think she was also very, very uh, dogmatic about not showing her leanings right. when she was reporting. And I think some of that has been lost with cable news and things like that. Like there, there was a time like, you know, Dan Rather, nobody, you know, whether he was left or right, nobody, not Dan Rather, um, what's his name? Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite. Yeah. You know, because, you know, back in those days it was, there was broadcast news and that was it. And nobody said what they thought. Now people tend to get more into what their, what their leanings are. Um, but I think some of that also comes with being educated, being in it every day, and I think that there is there is a certain degree of reality has a liberal bias. Um, I want to I want to that's you. I find that fascinating, and I want to get into that. But, but back, back up, up for, for a second. second. I, I, I agree, agree with, with you. you and most, most studies show, especially on these hot button cultural issues, journalists are are left of where the American people are. are broadly, broadly speaking, speaking. Like on guns, guns and can you an example. Because, like, for what? instance, guns. Where, 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 like, to me, the, you know, I, most of the polls I see are 80 to 90 percent want more gun control of, of Americans. Oh, it, well, it, that depends on, on the form of gun control. Well, like, I mean, let's right? say universal background checks. Universal background checks, now, whatever that means, I would say about 80 percent of the American people support it. Yes. And I... I would say 80 to 90 percent of traditional journalists support it. But are we um, including people for Fox News, Newsmax? I, I, I think that, yeah. you know, is that part of that 80 to 90 percent? Are you including those in real journalists? I, I would hope, Kelly, because I think that is one fallacy when Fox News says they're not mainstream media anymore. They've been around long enough. They're traditional media now, too, and they have their bias as well. Um, I think when people poll the media on their political views, I would hope they're including media across the spectrum. Because if they're only uh, including so-called left-wing yeah. journalists, then, of course, it's no. going to skew to the left. But, and I've always felt this way. And I'm no fan of Fox News. <laughs> um, to me, Kelly, Fox News came into existence because conservatives, I'd say rightly to a degree, felt like everything they were getting from the ABCs, NBCs, CBSs of the world back then 
generally were left of center and they wanted something that was more of their was liking. it left of center or was it left of them um well both like what what is what it what would like what would be the 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 left of center view on gun That's control a great question. that on, on gun control uh, that that most journalists agree with that most americans don't i'd say or any any issue well well, I'd say two, that's a great question. Say ban assault weapons. The numbers I've seen, journalists generally 70 to 80 percent support an assault weapons ban. The American people, it's about half and half. Republicans, it's about 20 to 30 percent. So there you've got journalists on one issue. They're a little left of of the American people generally, but they're certainly far left of where conservatives are. Okay, but they're cl more closely aligned with the American people than the conservative journalists are. They'd be closer. The American people would be right in between them. Yeah. So, but, but, so then why aren't we talking ahead. about the conservative bias in Newsmax, Fox News, and things like that? Oh, uh, completely. And, and I think. I think Newsmax and Fox and all the rest of them are even more biased than what we would call the traditional media because I think they were a reaction to it and they've gone way overboard. And this is like, like I was talking to you about this a little bit earlier where I think yeah. there's a difference between bias and leaning. Explain that. Um, okay, if you look up the word bias, it, it, it means that there's an unfair favoritism it, it, the, 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 the idea of fairness in there and I think you can have a fair right-leaning view and I think you can have a fair left-leaning view based on information for and and, and the, you know we'll take something very very you know universally accepted as yeah. wrong if I am against slavery that yeah. does not mean I have an anti-slavery bias that just means that I'm against slavery. Like, there's nothing unfair in my view that slavery is oh, bad. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's interesting, Kelly. So, you know, like, just slavery is bad. And if you, you know, and, and so there's, there's like, an informed opinion. You know, like, you, you, you learn things, and you say, based on what I know and based on these facts, I have formed this opinion. And I think the difference between bias and leaning is in whether the facts are there to back up your opinion. Um, so MSNBC is left-leaning. Uh, for the most part, they are... You wouldn't think that they lean into even being biased? I Okay, um, there's two things about that. First, they tend to... It tends to be fact-based and then the opinions, you know are based on facts. Like, uh, for instance, Rachel Maddow is not, um, she, she is an objectively intelligent person that is well-read and pr presents Agreed. facts, right? Agreed. Now, she, I will also say she is very left-wing. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that she is left-bias. Then you go to Sean Hannity, who <laughs> most of what he says is just not true. Like, it's objectively wrong. And then he forms his opinions, you know, like based on, you know, about the election or whatever. And, and this is where I think the danger comes in, is when you start lumping bias and leaning together, then that starts forming the uh, framework for things like election denial or, uh, you know, the whole idea of fake news, which, you know, originally was just literally some dude sitting there working on his computer making things up and pushing them on facebook and getting paid for yeah. it by russia right like that that's the yeah. actual origin of fake news then donald trump started calling all the news he didn't like fake news and so then cnn you know like you have magas that will say fake news cnn you know and it's i don't have any particular affinity for <laughs> cnn but it's not fake news. They 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 pre try to present facts. They they have retractions and things like that. Like if they get something wrong, they'll say we got this wrong. Fox News doesn't do that. Sean Hannity doesn't present retractions. 
He does not care about what the actual facts are. And then that kind of thing ends up undermining the, 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 the whole point of a free press, which is that we can make decisions based on um, knowledge, based yeah. on understanding, and then go out and, you know, you, whoever you want to vote for, I don't know. I know you don't want to vote for Trump. I don't know what you're doing for. No, I can't vote for any Republican. Um, but, um, you know, yeah. you vote for who you want. I vote for who I want. And it's but it's based on uh, what is what we know, what you know, based on an informed opinion. But when you start uh, maligning the entire prof media profession, then it's just you vote based on what you believe. And I base vote based on what I know. Kelly, you've, you've made three or four really cool, super important points there. And I, I have to ad agree with the biggest point you made, which is that Fox News has taken this notion of left or right leaning or biased, and it's on steroids now. It is propaganda. It's not news. And most importantly, it's not factual. Like my general thesis, Kelly, is the right wing media world over the years came into an existence and is a reaction to what they rightly perceived as a left leaning media world. But they've taken that Kelly and it's it's become something horrible. It's not even factual. And per your definition, it's extremely biased. Agreed. But what you also just said there is really helpful, this difference between left leaning and left biased. Just to make sure I understand, biased is not a good thing. Okay, okay. And there and are you, left bias, there are left biased websites. Um, are there any left biased, in your mind, mainstream newspapers or networks? Um, I'm trying to think. I'm, I... There's just not enough networks. There's CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News. There's no, there are like the Young Turks, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they yeah. can get yeah. a little, they, they can, they're a little bit weird. Um, there's some websites like, uh, I can't think of the. Yeah. Daily something or other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, of the mainstream players. And I might, if you and I had time, I won't now, I might quibble with you a little bit and I go on MSNBC a bunch. I think some of the shows on MSNBC enter into the realm of bias, not near where Fox and all the rest are. Mm -hmm. But that's really helpful, Kelly. I can see where somebody so, with, with, with uh, right inclinations would look at it that way. Like, like a Joy Reid can sometimes... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a few. Rachel Maddow is just a brilliant left-leaning person. Would you say then, Kelly, going back to our original question, forget about left-wing bias, the media has left-wing bias. Would you agree with me that most of what we've always considered traditional media in this country is left-leaning? The New York Times, the Post, I, I ABC, would say NBC. Based on what we understand as left versus right, that it is left leaning. But that all depends on how you define left and right. Like in, in and, turn, like if we're looking yeah. at the Overton window, this is yeah. this is a good way to think of it. If you're looking at the Overton window, most of the media is on the left side of that window, but still within the window. Versus right-wing media, which is constantly trying to stretch the window. And it's like four feet outside of the window frame. Um, yeah, that's fair. You know, but, but that's fair. I, 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 I think it's, you know, like left-leaning. It's, it's probably left-leaning, but it's still within the Overton window. And, and it, if I seeded that, and if you and I agreed, and I, I do believe the data over the years backs this up, that most journalists are left-leaning in traditional media, um, then, then dive into this with me as a journalist. 
I then always just take the leap. I know there was your mom and I know there are a number of journalists who've done a great job of keeping their own thoughts out of their journalism. But I've just always thought, Kelly, if you're left-leaning, you're left-leaning, you're left-leaning, eventually that shit is going to seep out in what you decide to cover and all the rest. Yeah, I think it does come out in, in what you decide to cover. And I think that's probably the, the thing that uh, conservatives feel the most is it's yeah. not so much how the news is reported, but what news is reported. Um, you know, like... Uh, like I think about... Kelly, I think about the, uh, like the Nashville mass shooter from mm -hmm. last year, uh, a transgender American who it seems like wanted to shoot white Christian people. Mm -hmm. And, and he had a manifesto that we're still not aware of what I hear on the right all the time. If that were a white supremacist who wanted to kill black people and he wrote that down in his manifesto, ABC, CBS would have put that out right away. But I, I would get counter that with that. I would counter that by saying that there were all kinds of right wing extremists with manifestos that were not put out. Um, really? Yeah. So um, okay. Um, and 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 the reason they don't put out these manifestos is because they there don't want to inflame inflammatory things. And um, you know, and and then. Hey, but let me ask you a question as a journalist on that. Don't you think no matter who or what commits a mass shooting? If they have a manifesto that that we we need to know, so like we should know, so we know why the person did what the person did. Um, I've always been curious. About I, I, that. I think if if I re, if I understand correctly, it's not like the journalists have been given a copy of it and decided to not print mm -hmm. it. The police mm -hmm. have made that determination um, that they don't want to release that to the media. Um, and the right would argue, Kelly, well, the media hasn't and, and made a big like, deal about the fact Is anybody going to start that... arguing that, that, you know, police in America have a left-wing bias? Oh, God, no. So, <laughs> so, so why, why, aren't, why isn't the right-wing police, like, I, I could counter and say, why aren't the right-wing police releasing these right-wing manifestos? And, and that's and a And then fair how question. do you know it's a left-wing trans manifesto if you haven't seen it? You know, I, I, yeah, and, and, and I would, there, there I would are be some right people there. that have even speculated that this was not a real trans person, but it was somebody yeah. faking it. But I'm, and then overriding all of that, I would say I don't really care. What I care about is that this person was able to obtain a weapon that they could go in and do that shooting. Oh, stop! I'm going to lovingly hit you over the head right now, and I appreciate that you're concerned about that, and you and I clearly disagree on guns. But Kelly, you care about why somebody did what he did. I mean, that's a oh, hate oh, crime. No, no, that's I mean, a... When I say that, I, I, I'm saying like. You want to know a motivation, don't you? Well, well, okay. The synagogue shooting. Yeah. The Uvalde shooting. The um. The uh, there, there's uh, the, God, the, 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 the the Charleston Uvalde shooting. Blur. Like there, there's a yeah. lot of shootings that are from right wing extremists. Oh, that, God, are, yeah. that are motivated for all kinds of reasons. And but even with that, I'm not so much concerned with what their personal motives were. But where did those motives come from? What where did they originate from? You know, and so when you had like, yeah. like, I think at least two of these shootings, they you, you can. They were radicalized by Donald Trump. Um, you know, uh, that to but me that's is a concern. Good. You know, uh, the, the, but, but, you know, like the, the, the one shooter that might have been trans to use that as an attack Agreed. on trans people is to me disgusting. My, I have a Agreed. nephew that's trans and, um, um and you know, Kelly, I'm with you. That, and, that life and is I'm... hard and it doesn't need to be made harder because somebody Amen. did a thing. Completely agree with you. Completely agree. I'm, I'm at your side on that. And I agree with you, Kelly, that we need to know where the motivations came from, which is why we need to know what the motivation is. Like this, what, what, whatever motivated this Nashville shooter, mm -hmm. we should know. And if it, it put to bed any rumors that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And, 
You know, I, maybe they they need to release some kind of redacted version or something. I don't I don't know the answer to that. I think that, but but I think that the the, the decision is not made by media. The decision is made Agreed. by law enforcement. I, I agree. The only point I'd make, my friend, and then you can give the final point on this. If the media sensed that the shooter was a right wing white supremacist, whatever, and the police was holding the manifesto, I can guarantee you that the media would be hounding the police mm. the past year to get at that. But have, much more did than they, they have. Did they, did they hound the media for the manifesto for the um, synagogue shooter, for the Charleston shooter? What they did is they went and they looked at the, uh, the, the reason they know that is they looked at their social media history and they found out, you know, found these posts. And then that's what gets, that's what gets circulated. Now, whether the, you know. So you're, maybe you're thinking that the manifesto is not a big deal in general. Um, I, I'm a saying manifesto. it's, I'm saying it's not a journalistic decision. So okay. you can't, you can't blame journalists. And, 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 you know, if, if this, uh. If, if the, the Nashville shooter had Facebook posts and things like that, then those are as fair game as any um, anything from the synagogue shooter. I only blame journalists for not acting like journalists. If there is a manifesto for not acting like journalists and trying to get to the bottom of that manifesto, that's all. Hey, but Kelly... So if the media generally is left leaning, how big of a problem has it been traditionally that those left leanings will impact what they cover and how they cover it? Because to conservatives, it's the whole thing. I think, okay, I, I've been trying to think of an example. Um, hmm. the, 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 it, it's just... So let's say somebody, um, like every once in a while, I'll see an article where somebody successfully defended their home against an armed intruder mm -hmm. because they had guns, right? And then that's been characterized as an example of the media not covering a story that supports a conservative yeah. talking point, right? Like that you need. But... Um, even that is putting a right, a conservative spin on what is selected to be covered. First of all, it's usually because it's covered that they know that it happened. But yeah. it's also being used to um, counter a narrative that doesn't exist. Like, liberals, for the most part, are not saying that you shouldn't be able to have a gun for uh, home protection. Right. Like mm -hmm. that's something that's agreed on. Everybody agrees that you have a right to have a gun to protect yourself. Um, that would be even. Yeah, that would be a mainstream Democratic position, too. Yeah. So so it's it's not so much that they're not covering a right, a conservative mm -hmm. news item. They're just not con covering it with a conservative viewpoint. But that might be because that conservative viewpoint is not really. I don't want to say it's not valid. It's just not controversial. Like it's accepted. That's an interesting thought, Kelly. Let me ask you. When, when a good guy uses a gun to thwart a shooting or to defend their family at home, do you think traditional media, which is more anti-gun than the right, do they downplay stories like that you i think, think maybe to a point um and even more like okay so a good guy uses a gun i think there was like a shooting in a mall where a good yeah, guy with that? a gun yeah. shot somebody right and then there was a guy without a gun that stopped a uh conservative or it could stopped a mass shooting you know he just went up and tackled the guy or something right yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and the guy without a gun got more mainstream media, media coverage than the guy with a gun. Like, I'll acknowledge that. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Like, I mean, just based, and that could be based on who I follow on Twitter, based on yeah. my own predilections to what I read. And I think that that could also be 
part of what plays into this, you see a story on conservative media, you know, like conservatives see a story on conservative media, and then they turn to MSNBC and it's not on there. And so then that means that it's not being covered by the liberal media. Yeah. Um, versus, but, but, but that could be, it just wasn't covered there at that time. You know, um, I, I. Do you think, Kelly, and I want to get in, you said something interesting a little bit ago. You said you have no affinity for CNN. I, I want to drill down on that with you. Like in my world, forget about the right because they're crazy. MSNBC, if I'm going to use your definition, I'll get rid of bias. That's really, really helpful. MSNBC, I would say, is way left leaning, far left leaning. I would say CNN is just traditionally left leaning. But you pick that apart. I I am left leaning. <laughs> uh, you I know, know, I like, know. Like, 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 so I, I prefer MSNBC. I prefer the news they cover. I don't have any problem with CNN or people that watch CNN. I have problems with Fox News because okay. Fox News is just lying a lot of times. CNN doesn't lie. I, I, I think that um, a lot of their story selection seems to be uh, geared towards the sensational more than the informative. Um, Got it. And that's why I say I don't have uh, an affinity for ah. it. But I, I will also say I am a, um, a pretty... Uh, I, I read a lot. I, I probably read yeah. about a thousand news articles a week. Um, Jeez. Uh, so, so most of my information, and I try to, like, I'll read, like, Politico, I think, is a great example of a conservative website that I think it tends to be accurate. Uh, it it, it oh, gives me so a different funny, perspective, Kelly. but it doesn't That's interesting lie. from you, because you're left-leaning, I'm right-leaning. I never would have called political right-leaning, but that's interesting that you think that. I, I think it covers, like, the stories it covers are the stories yeah. that conservatives want covered. Like, it, well, mm. I wouldn't say the stories, it, the stories the conservatives want covered are covered by Politico. Mm. So, so conservative news you can get from Politico. Uh, ah, okay. You know, uh, there's, there's a few others. Uh, yeah. But then there's also just stuff that makes Newsmax look like it's socialist, you know, that, 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 that I don't want to go near, you know, I like, there's, th th there's this whole thing called right wing media that is just batshit crazy for lack of a better. Do word. you agree? Do you agree with my general thesis? I agree that as someone who comes from right wing media, I agree with you. It's now batshit crazy. And you thought I was batshit crazy a few years ago. I get it. Do, but do you, Kelly, do you see, why, like, it's a reaction to what they thought was unfair in the general I, I media. I do. I do see that. Um, Even if they've taken it overboard. Like, um, I just... Uh, okay, so here's... here's uh, we've agreed on this before, so I'll bring up this. There, there's the difference in the way that uh, liberals and conservatives look at abortion. Yeah. And, and to me, a lot of things you can say, let's come to the middle. You know, what, what's the compromise? But if you're a conservative and you believe life begins at conception, the yeah. greatest, you know, like, I mean, it's just you're they they really believe you're killing a baby. Yes. Um, if you're a liberal and you don't believe that life life begins at conception, then the greatest government overreach is to force a woman to have a baby that she doesn't want to have, right? Exactly. And so it's not like there, there, there's a, a middle ground between life beginning at conception and life not beginning at conception. Yeah, you know, there, It's not life sort of begins at conception. You either think it does or doesn't, and then your paradigm is based on that. And so, yes. so you can't compromise when you have conflicting paradigms. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, exactly. So, so when it comes to things like that, to where news that is presented is outside of your paradigm, then I can see where you would feel like this is biased against you or, you know, like, like this doesn't represent your thinking because it, it, it's, it's, just, it's just not what you think.
It's not the way you think. It's not your whole operating system. It's like trying to run Mac on an iOS or yeah. on, 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 a, on a Windows. You know, and, and so I can see that yeah. conflict uh, being genuine and, see, and real. And that's fair. And that's fair. And that, that makes a lot of sense. But like, can you see that it's also just more broad and not even issues based? I mean, virtually every study I've seen has shown that 80, 90 percent of Washington, D.C. reporters typically vote Democrat every for president every four years. And so when people in, on the right hear this election after election, rightly or wrongly, they begin to think these folks are, well, they would say biased. These folks are leaning left. Okay, They're always but, voting for the Democrat. But but let's just say that hmm. um, you, 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 these are also the most, most informed people. Uh, broadly Ooh, speaking, they're, they're, they're the ones that are every day, day in, day out, in the political spectrum. Oh, the reporters. The reporters, yeah. They, they, yeah. You know, they, they're, they're the ones doing the reporting. They're, you could make an argument that they are the most knowledgeable of the issues. So are they reporting what they're reporting because of what they know, or do they know what they know because of their reporting? Or are, are, are they voting liberal? Well, they're human. Are, are, are they're they, human. But, 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 but doesn't knowledge come into how you vote? Like, are they voting based, the, voting the way they vote because they are immersed in it and they know what they're talking about? Or are they talking are, about what they're talking about because it confirms their beliefs? Either okay. one of those could be valid. True. I'll give you a perfect example, Kelly. And then again, f hit me upside the head for this. When Barack Obama came on the scene in 2008 and he first ran for president, I'm exaggerating, damn near every objective journalist out there basically dropped all their objectivity and fucking just fell in love with this guy. And it, no matter what you thought of McCain and all the rest, it dramatically impacted the coverage of that election. The media just went gaga over Obama. Respond to that. I didn't, I didn't see that. <laughs> but I like Obama, you know. Um, if, if, you know like if you didn't like Obama, you know, I, I would say I could also just counter with the media dropped everything and covered every single Trump speech that's ever been done between 2015 and 2016 and they did like they were giving every single trump speech live coverage msnbc cnn fox news every single one of them um because it drove up ratings and then it was just like hillary clinton jumped in a birding building saved 17 kittens and didn't bring out patches squeaky toy you know like they cover her that way you, you talk to Magus today, and they'll talk about how the FBI was, you know, in bed with Clinton. When two weeks before the election, they didn't yeah. talk about the Trump investigation, right. Right. and well, they reopened the Clinton investigation. So but I would say, and I, I, I agree I, I with you, I think with, with Obama, you had a black man with a legitimate chance to win, and that drove ratings, and because that drove ratings... Networks covered it. That's when I talk okay. about tr the media has a sensationalist bias more than they and, have and, a left or right bias. And Kelly, you bringing up Trump perfectly buttresses your argument that sensationalism is a big part of this because I don't think they loved Trump politically, but he was great ratings. I think the difference that I felt and we felt with Obama was it wasn't just they fucking loved him. They loved his politics. He was the, the, going to be the first black president. They fell in love with everything about him. Um, I remember being on with Chris Matthews back in the day. And that's when oh, Chris if Matthews If this makes you said, feel any better, Chris what? Matthews annoys every fiber of my being. <laughs> really? Yes, yes. He makes oh my, my God, ears Kelly. bleed when he talks. He you sounds, and I you know, talking about squeaky toys, he sounds like a squeaky toy. Yeah. Like if a squeaky toy could talk, it would sound like Chris Matthews. You and I share that because he and I fought all the time. 
and he's the one that said, Obama gives me a thrill up my leg. Um, but what you said early in the conversation, I, I want to drill down on this before we close. And, and Kelly, this has been so helpful because you've you've cleared up for me the notion of bias and leaning. And I and everybody listening to us is going to get that. You said, well, Joe, reality is has a lefty bias or a lefty leaning. Reality leans left. I don't want to paraphrase. Tell me what you mean by that, though. Um, you said bias, but I know you probably didn't mean. Bias. Yeah, I mean it sarcastically. I, I, I think that if you look at things based on reality, you will end up with what is considered a liberal bias. But that's your own left leaning. Um, and that is there, my, correct? but but that's also why I'm left leaning. <laughs> um, <laughs> you big <and> jerk. <laughs> it, 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 just a, a story you, you may or may not find this funny. But one time I was talking <laughs> to my wife, and she says, "What would you do if you met a, a Republican that knows as much about politics as you?" And she and I said, "Well, that's not fair." And she says, "Why not?" And I said, "Well, if they knew as much about politics as me, they wouldn't be a Republican." So. Do you still like, do you really, it, it, by the way, that is funny, but do you really believe that? I, I well, forget about Republican, okay. say conservative. Uh, I'm conservative, no longer Republican. Yeah. And, and that's why I do distinguish between conservative and Republicans. Cause there, can you be a like, very informed you, conservative? There's uh, what Olympia snow. Yeah. There, you know, there, there are people that are conservative that I do not consider you know, like Republicans or uninformed or dishonest or, you know, like you can be an honest Republican or an honest conservative. At this point, I don't think you can be an honest Republican. Um, I'd kind of kind of I'd kind of agree with that, too. Um, but. Uh, Have you, Kelly, but but that, but that, but just so we're clear and you're a student of this stuff. History is replete with examples of intelligent, informed conservatives, even if you disagree with their politics. Yeah, yeah. And, and I agree. Okay. You know, uh, Abraham Lincoln was one of them. Um, <laughs> the, 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 uh, He'd be a rhino today. The, um, like here, but here's an example. Like, I, I used to be more uh, right-leaning when it came to gun control, you know. Oh. Um, then uh, the Northern Illinois shooting happened. Yeah. Okay. And I was a youth minister at the time. I took care of college kids. We'd get together, have Bible studies, stuff like that. Which, by the way, not all Christians are Republicans or conservatives. You, can, <laughs> you know, something people don't see. I always say Jesus rode True. a donkey, but he never rode an elephant. Um, so anyway, I went out to, to, to Northern Illinois. We were handing out Bibles and we were talking yeah. to people. And I must have talked to 200 kids that day. And the building that the shooting was in was right next door to the cafeteria. I don't know if you know that. And yeah. it was like right around lunchtime. So the, the cafeteria was packed. Kids were hiding yep. under the tables. They were, they were running. And I would ask them, what were you doing when the shooting happened? And every single one of them, I am not kidding, every single one of them said, I was texting my mom. I was texting my dad. I was texting my boyfriend. I was texting my girlfriend. You know, they were texting the people they loved. And they were saying, if I don't see yeah. you again, I love you. Yeah. That's what they were thinking about. They were thinking about the people they loved. And I was yeah. on the way home and I was thinking about it. And it hit me what not one person said. Not one person said, I wish I had a gun. And that is when I realized that um, the the problem is not the people that don't have the guns. It's the problem is the people that do have the guns. And I do think that people have a right to defend themselves and they have a right to weapons to defend themselves. But I think we just, whatever it is, we need to have more uh, genuine concern and genuine ways to prevent people that should not have guns from having them. And that's nothing at all to say about honest, law-abiding yeah. people having guns. And I feel like 
Ninety percent of the people in the world will agree with me. Five percent will say anybody should have a gun for any reason ever, and five percent will say nobody should ever have a gun for any reason ever. But I think most Americans agree. If you're a law-abiding citizen, you should be able to have a gun. But if you're not, or if you're, you know, you're wacko or whatever, you should not have a gun. Like there are some people that shouldn't have guns. I should not well, be able to walk into Walmart if I'm a terrorist, buy an AR-15 and start shooting people right there. Like, there needs to be precautions. Anyway. As a, well, K Kelly, I appreciate what you're saying. And as a, as you know, as a huge gun guy, I will acknowledge we do a shitty job in this country of keeping guns out of the hands of people who shouldn't have them. Agreed. And I appreciate your reaction to and emotion with the shooting way back when at Northern Illinois. And what I find fascinating is, and, and I know it's genuine, but like I, every time there's a mass shooting, one of my reactions, Kelly, is, damn, I wish there was someone trained and armed with a gun that could have helped thwarted that, that shooting. And I know you may think that's crazy, but that's always part of my reaction too. I'll give you the final word on that. Like, but, but, you know, you, you, how many of these school shootings have had a trained armed guard and that was the first person that was killed? Oh, then you don't even, you'll never agree with me on arming teachers if they want to be armed. No, I wouldn't. I, I, and, and, and we don't have to agree on that. I, I, I think that there is enough issues in schools that arming te I, I think within an hour of doing that, there would be a dead black kid. Um, All right, we're going to leave that one alone. We're going to leave that one alone, Kelly. <laughs> But um, give me, but give I think me your, I think within uh, the 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 like I think there's that is an honest debate. My my, my point yes. in bringing this up is that I learned something and I changed my mind, and I think yes. that is whether you're left or right or conservative or liberal, that is something that is missing from the entire landscape. Amen. Is people learning Amen. like we we call it flip flopping, and it should be called learning and and. Our society is better if people learn. Well, Kelly, agreed. And thank you. If you and I were having this conversation seven years ago and you brought up the word transgender, I would have jumped down your throat. And then I've spent the last few years really listening to transgender men and women, engaging with them, understanding the issue. I'm... I'm I'm 180 degrees removed from that. This might surprise you, but loving. seven years ago, I would have agreed with you. Oh, okay. And I've kind of gone through that transition. I've had two yeah. family members that have come out trans. Yeah. So I read the science on it and found out exactly. there is actually a much more complicated science Exa exactly. than um, is uh, touted. I can, hey, I, I can actually share a tweet with you about that science if you're interested. I'd, I'd like that. Show that to me. Send that to me. I'd like that. that. Final question, my friend. And you've alluded to this. I think one of the biggest problems in this country now is that we are so balkanized. There's not a lot of this going on, by the way. Oh, definitely. People, and that's why and, I, and I'm glad I follow you and that we can have I'm this glad I follow you. Yeah. And by the way, you should follow Kelly because he's also really fucking funny. Uh, he's a very funny handle to follow at Kelly Scaletta, you always make me laugh once or twice a day. But there's a problem, my friend. We all go to our separate corners in the media we take in now. Mm -hmm. And you got the left, you got the, the wacky right, and we're not, people don't typically read stuff they disagree with. I really I worry about this. I'll give you that. the word. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And that's why I make a concerted effort to try and read the other point of view. Um, but I don't, like, I, I, I always say you can't compromise between fact and fiction. Yeah. So when it comes to, like, election denialism and stuff like that, I have no interest in that. It's just a bunch of crap. Um, but honest people that have a difference of opinion, I'm always open to listening to. Um, but, uh, you know, like... He, one thing I was just thinking about today is how many uh, of these um, uh, people that say that, uh, you know, the, 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 the trials, uh, the, the indictments against Trump are a witch hunt have actually read the indictments? None. 
you know, I, I talked mean, to them, Kelly. They haven't. If you if you read the indictments, it's hard to say this is a witch. There is serious, serious evidence that well, anybody, if, if it were you or me, we would be in jail right now. We would not be campaigning for president. How many of the people who say the January 6th committee was a big witch hunt ever watched any of the hearings? Um, yeah. None. None. Hey, his name is Kelly Scaletta. You need to follow him on Twitter, at Kelly, it's all one word, S-C-E-A-L-E-T-T-A. -T -T He's a great, interesting follow. He's a good, lovable, hardcore progressive. Uh, and I, I, Kelly, I learned shit from you. And Thanks. you really cleared up for me the, the, this really important distinction between biased and leaning. This is an important topic. Thank you, my friend. Thanks a lot, my friend, and I appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Remember to listen, share, and follow White Flag with Joe Walsh on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere great podcasts are found. And be sure to leave a five-star review. This has been White Flag with Joe Walsh.